Coming up in today's Maelstrom of Lore. According to the most correct thing you can find on the internet, which is ChatGPT, yep. of course, it tells you nothing but truths. <laughs> so this will settle our debate once and for all, and we can move on to more important things for Absolutely orcs. Wrong. As well as... If you kill orcs off your planet, be prepared to be facing orcs forever. And also... Oh, now we're getting to weird oh, monstrosities. Whoa, that doesn't sound right, but probably. Hmm. Like this is the Maelstrom of Lore. Mini Wargamer Dave here from MiniWargamer.com. Welcome, Wargamers, to the Maelstrom of War. Nope, it's of lore. It's not of, of war, but it kind of is of war, isn't it? It, it? Steve, what do you think? Is it? There'll be a type of war today. There's, there's going to be wars. I think it's warg. 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 <laughs> warg. Okay, I think warg. this warring words. We're talking about orcs. We're talking about 40k orcs, and we're going to dive right in. This is new, Pammer, so if you're brand new, this is the perfect place to start. Our sign fell. The sign fell from off of the front. You know what? I believed that would happen, and because I believed it would happen, oh my it, ha oh. it happens, oh. right? Isn't that how Here orcs work? We go. Isn't yes. isn't that how orcs work? Isn't that the lore? If you want to believe that, because Matthew is walking on the carpet. He's oh, the oh, camera. that was actually because I watched it. Cut I, I, I believe like that the camera would cut out. Technical difficulties, like no. it's, <laughs> it, there's, there's a lot of orcs. I believed it would happen, though, Steve. Therefore, it happened. Camera cut out because he walked over. Believed it would happen and happened. That's orc lore. We even see this, sign? isn't it? You don't even see the sign, do we? Yeah, we on do. Right oh, there. the big one. That's there where we are. see the sign. Okay. Okay. Crooked. All right, so... Like <laughs> I, I did my best, all right? Like, like I'm eight years old, which I am. That's pretty much his adult body housing the eight-year-old. That's truth. Explain orcs to me. They're stupid. Don't worry about it. No, no, no. It's quite simple. <laughs> they were created by a superior race millions and millions of years ago. They were created to combat lots of different things specifically all sorts of things <laughs> and structured into the intricate and purely packed DNA of these orcs are secret upon secret upon secret that allows that they don't even realize that allows them to adapt to any situation to know. such a way that they will always rise up and protect the galaxy from any other race becoming too superior, including themselves. It's true. Is that simple enough? I was going to say they took uh, and green. football hooligans, painted them green, and gave them guns. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, 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 and they're big, green, muscly, except for the little ones. They and funny. they love war, and they say it in a weird way. How do they say war? Uh, war. No, they... They, no. Uh, they say it with an accent. It's like, it's like, it's like war. They are not saying war, and it's, I hate that yeah. stupid... I, what are they war. saying if they're not saying they're war? They're saying war. Wah. Not war. Wah. Okay, to be fair, Steve, I think you are the <laughs> you are the only orc player who has an orc army that is built exactly as the box art shows and is painted exactly as the box art shows. You have the most you correct... Said correctly, thank you. Yes. It's not war, it's wah. You so have the, the wah, not the war. It's not an accent, because then they would just spell war. It's no, war. you spell it like it sounds. Wah. That's how English works. Wah. If I put the G-H in there, right? Okay, so Steve, are you saying this because orcs speak differently than humans? No. Typically Cockney English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're well-versed in uh, <laughs> oh, you Cockney get... Gothic. <laughs> yeah, you got... <laughs> okay, so it's, it's obviously wah. Wah. It's the wah. Okay. But how, I've heard this too, though. Word on the street is it is actually the word war. It's just how they say is it. That, any... People do say that, but people say incorrect things all the time. But is there, is that, there, that is true. I have to agree with that. Is there something I mean, in a one point to say they're not saying war, dot, dot, dot. They're saying wah. Well, here, I'll, I'll ask. <laughs> what does I'll ask wah chat GPT. mean? Uh, is that in what we're looking? Are we looking that up right now? 40, I'm going to ask ChatGPT. You scream as you charge in the Warhammer Forty K universe. I scream more when I when the the orc, Are you in the middle of a war when you're screaming it? Not necessarily. You could be in the middle of a bar fight. You're in. It, you're an orc. It, okay, that's fair. You could be anywhere. Just, yes. Orcs is the best, and they never stop fighting. So they begin to yell the word yelling. war, but war. their war is never ending. So they never finish the they word. They never say the word. They never <laughs> say the word. <laughs> Don't spread false information on the. All right. Show. According to the most correct thing you can find on the internet, which is ChatGPT. Yep. Of course. It tells you nothing but truths. <laughs> so this will settle our debate once and for all, and we can move on to more important things for orcs. Be wrong. In the Warhammer 40k universe, the term "wa" used by orcs is more than just a simple yell of war. 
So Steve is so, right. It's a multifaceted concept that encapsulates the orc's way of life, especially in terms of warfare and mobilization. Battle cry, on a basic level, it's a battle cry. Number two, or uh, it's also a psychic phenomenon, which we can talk about. Three, it is a term for their mobilization to war. So an orc wa is specifically that. And eight. four, there is a cultural phenomenon. Wow, jeez, you are smarter than I actually were giving you credit here, ChatGPT. It heard me. It's it true. Like, you were you. sarcastic at first. And it's like, it's I'll, like, I'll show you. you. <laughs> <laughs> For the Orcs of Wa is a significant cultural event. It's a time when Orc society is at its peak. <laughs> united in purpose and driven by the thrill of battle and conquest the golden era so while in conclusion it says while wa may sound like a simple shot of war in the context of warhammer 40k it's a complex and deeply ingrained part of orc culture and psychology steve don't belittle my people you're don't you're correct little, like, <laughs> don't think sound <laughs> doesn't it sound like every one of them should be wearing like a tuxedo now it's just like excuse me i'm a very cultured person when i yell wa a wa. <laughs> they wear their orc, a They wear their orc equivalent tuxedos. That's right. They're ard armor. They're ard armor. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's cool. Uh, I thought you know what's funny, Steve. I, I I don't know about you guys, but I thought that like Steve was just being Steve and be like, no, no, no. It's like it, stop making fun of it. And like there wasn't a reason for him. He was just being Steve about it. He was still and, being Steve about it. But yeah. I don't mean that in a bad way, Steve. I just mean like some you, you you say things just to rile people up. Like and that's what It's Josh. <laughs> yeah, that's they, more they, Josh than Steve. You know what? The internet gets us confused already, so it, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. You're both bearded men. What else is there, right? So done, sold, done. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's actually, you know what? This is thank you, ChatGBT. This is a very good springboard. I, I apologize and I will accept my AI overlords. I love AI. Rise up. <laughs> Just want to put that out there. The YouTube algorithms will now have this video go higher. Hey, that's how you can. I just, I freaking figured it out. Yeah. All right. I know. What to, I know what to put in the description now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Continue. Okay. 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 So let's go back to that psychicness. Okay, because there was a you know point of interest there. Uh, you know that several. Little, yes. Little. Okay. Let's talk about that. Okay. What? What? The. the that sounds like the warp. That sounds like uh, that type of energy and power that relates to the orcs in some way. Is that is that true? Is that something that I'm saying that's correct? Is there a relationship between psychic anything and the orcs? Yes, definitely. But your other those were separate questions, though. I don't know. What do I you don't think? even understand the how they were separate questions. Well, because you, you asked if it's related to the warp, and then if it's if it has anything to do with or in relation to psychic stuff. Is orc, that not the same thing? Not necessarily. Because you're assuming all psychic powers come from the warp. Now I'm no longer assuming that. It's currently distinctly different. And I have nothing to back that up. Oh, with that big wah energy? Yeah. Yeah. It's a... Hold, hold on, hold on. The wah, which is energy that is like... It's a, it's a prayed to by the orcs? No, it's... They don't even... They don't have to believe that. I think it's, it's more of the concept that like if you take an individual orc, the orc is not psychically tapped Isn't into it? anything but the more oh, okay. the more of them you get together the more that kind of grows so it's not like the nids where there's like a like a hive mind or something going on but it's as you get more and more orcs into the same area that the the their their little bit of psychic energy kind of kind of comes together so okay it, it essentially i i believe in the lore there is a distinction between Hua energy and warp energy. <laughs> now, Leave your I, comments below and let us know your explanation they, of the distinction. They do interact, though, because we know that powerful psychers could um, drown them out. And also that nulls, like we had talked about in the one thing, pariahs, the blanks of the universe that suppress warp energy around them, it does actually work against Hua energy as well. So huh. I have proof of that in a book that was written, but it's just, you know... Novels can intro introduce mm -hmm. contradicting canon sometimes, That's right? Kind of a, yeah, well, I'm not, I don't know if it's a point or not, but it's so it's nice. So the fact that a psyker can interact with a orc, an orc psyker tells us that there's at least a relation between them. But I believe in the lore, it never quite tells you that the Wa energy just comes from the warp. It just comes from their own psychic ability. Okay. So, so they they definitely are related, but not necessarily drawn from the same source. Okay, that makes. I think little, that might be a good way to look at it. A little more right? sense. I'm looking up a good way of answering this question, and I don't think there's a case, but Classic there's orcs. there's never been a case of an orc doing psychic things and then summoning a demon, right? That is correct. Yes. Well, 
as far as I know. So it's never. Been, that's all I. Can, that's all we can ever really say with forty. Orc overdoes it. His head pops. What yeah, about his head explodes? Do you remember? This is outside of the narrative. More of a mechanical thing when it yeah, comes. Demon to Hunter's it. Codex, right? Yeah, there's that Demon Hunter's, but more recent, like even before that, seventh, say seventh edition, uh, even now edition, they still perils of the warp. But like, uh, do you remember if they had their own perils chart in seventh edition? Only in fantasy. Only in fantasy. In, they in seventh, the, not in seventh edition for and, sure. They just yeah. they just went along with the same the standard, things. Yeah. But that's that's the gamification of curious. the lore. Maybe, maybe there would have been a because Tyranids also used the the basic psychic abilities in seventh edition, and we know that their energy is very different than well, that of the in, warp. In fantasy, the follow up was that they always had a different perils of the warp chart. It was like the year. No, it wasn't Yurg. That was one of the results. What was, was the, the results? Yeah. What was the uh, what was the actual chart called? The Wamis. The Wamis. The Wamis cast. Yeah. Every every every, fantasy, every <laughs> wizard would miscast the same except for orcs because they don't tap into the eight winds which is chaos which is the warp yeah uh, orcs another, another okay so together. to summarize this so that we can all follow the conversation <laughs> um <laughs> the orcs have a different psychic energy that they draw from than say chaos psychers i th i think well, it's safe psychers. to say yes yeah or at the very least because if they were created by the old ones which is kind of canon kind of not canon and they were created to combat things like the Necrons and also Chaos. The old ones being those who created humanoids in the universe? Uh, not all of them. They're just an old, old race from tens of millions of years ago. And they created the orcs? The, it, allegedly. Allegedly. Okay, so They're, that, all they that, probably created the orcs. They the probably old ones, created, whoever they were, in they, the universe. Yes. When, when If they created the orcs, the purpose they created the orcs for was to combat Chaos, amongst other stuff. Which means they would create them to be able to interact with it. Otherwise, because they could, orcs do travel through the warp, so they are able to. But that's because they believe they can. But if that's if that's how it works, and it's it's kind of like we're we're taking Wait, some silliness. Ten second description of the warp, really quick. Uh, another dimension of reality that is chaotic, but if you learn to ride the waves of it, you can travel faster than light. But demons live there too. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> it's yeah. you basically you travel through hell to go faster than light. If you want a kind of a cool. quick summary, okay. It's like you take a right in the warp, but you're going left in reality. Uh, so it's a mirror. No, well, not exactly. Definitely not. That was a one example. I've yeah. heard yeah. descriptions that it could be described as a mirror. Yeah, it's 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 a mirror emotionally, but not physically in any way. An emotional mirror. An emotional mirror to a certain extent. Yes. So the orc wa energy. So if they were created to fight that, they have to be able to interact with that. Unlike Necrons who can't and Tau who can't. Um, they can interact. And so we're, we're taking a lot of mashup of nonsensical lore. Like, you know, the orcs are kind of, they were kind of a joke thing at first. Uh, <laughs> we have to, I think we have to at least admit that. When they were first introduced, it was just this funny joke race. But as they've gotten more and more stuff written about them, they've become way more interesting, just like anything else. If you flesh it out, you can make it interesting. And so we do have things from the Beast Arises series, which is a series of 12 books that were about the, one of the greatest was of of the past 10,000 years. In fact, I think it's the greatest wa. It was even bigger than the last time we really saw a beast. Right. Yeah, it was even bigger than the one they when the emperor of mankind had to fight them. It's even bigger than what all is, the current ones. What is a wa? That's just a wa is just like an invasion of orcs. It's, it's a great the, gathering of green. It's a great gathering of orcs. Yeah, great they, gathering of green. I they, like that. They usually have some sort of goal which is or a strong enough you have to have a strong enough leader to unite them. Yeah. They will in fight forever. They just like fighting. That's all the basic orc brain just enjoys a good fight. And that's what they live for. They're they're knocking happy. heads. As long as they're fighting and being fought a good fight, they're happy. That's it. But that's not really it. It's just what they think is it. That's what they've been bred what the to orcs believe. think it yeah, is. That's what it, they've been, it, it's their is. instinct. It's their instinct. Yeah. Okay. You'll never like there's a story of them going into the warp and landing on a demon planet. Tuska head rip. Yep, yeah, where, yeah. where, where they fought and they were all killed, but then they were resurrected and they got to fight again. And for a human being, that would be hell, but they thought they found orc heaven. Yeah, they found no, they, it You mean like a, we get to fight? It was a corn, we get to kill, we lose, demon and then we rise again? Tuska demon killer. Yeah, you demon know about killer. this one. Yeah, you know about this killer. one. That's, yes. Yeah. yes. Right, and so to, to an orc, that's heaven. Like you could not make them happier. It's hell for the demons. <laughs> yeah. So the demons are, yeah, like that one episode of The Simpsons where Homer goes to hell and he feeds him the donuts. No, no, you're like, donuts, eh? And he's like, yeah. And he feeds him like forever. And then by the end, he's just like, uh, I can't remember the person he mentioned. He's like, I, I don't understand. I don't yeah, understand. I don't understand what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs>
And Homer's in the chair. He's like, more, like, more, 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 more. more. <laughs> Donuts, thank you. So it's like that. It's like that. So, so their 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 primal instinct, which is built into them, is just to fight, and they love it. So now you mentioned something before about they're like they grow to more, and they don't even know what they are yet. So what what is that? What does that mean? Does anybody else want to touch on that first? Because I could talk about that forever. Uh, well, I, what, what do you guys think? My, my, my no, this is new hammers. So it's simple. Rudimentary. It's like they just keep growing and like they kind of adapt to whatever they need to be. Like, yeah. uh, like if they, yeah, need, uh, if they need a smart guy, they'll have a smart guy. If they need, uh, well, is he called guy, a smart boy? It's, it's, well, no, he's weird. A weird boy. No, it's a weird, weird, weird boy. boys are smart. No, like the mechs, the big mechs are the smart ones. Well, no, no, no. They're, they're yeah. book smart. Oh, I guess the weird boys are like spiritually yeah. smart. They're street smart. It's a street smart. So there, there's a unit in the orc faction called a weird boy who's smart and a mech boy who's good at fixing stuff. Engineering, yeah. Yeah. yeah like they're they're engineering. Me- mechanics. Well, naturally kind of knows how to do certain stuff? things. Like if sure oh, they are because, because he believes he is. is. Say they're, say they're that's stranded all they somewhere. They go on a planet and they're stranded and they need to whip together something to get themselves out of a situation. One of the orcs would all of a sudden become smart enough to whip something together. And, only. Yeah. Really? Only if there's enough of them. There has to be enough. So this okay. is this is the interesting thing. If the lore is, continues to be written the way it has in the past, there, like I said, is a fail safe for them that there has to be enough of them. The, it's not so much that they need it. It's more that the more that gather... It together the larger the wa the more which is all, the which is it's an, an fighting think of it like it, it's, a, it's a if, if you get a sufficiently powerful enough orc so orcs in fight now physically they have something interesting that happens to them when they fight if an orc fights a, a strong enemy and wins they grow physically a little bit bigger bigger the f- bigger the orc the more fights he's won yes yes well, that's exactly their whole thing it, it takes the whole might thing. versus is right thing to a whole a new level boss. Mm. right and so you literally have larger and larger orcs theoretically there is no limit to how <laughs> large they can growing. grow and we have evidence of that in some of our books where they'd grow to be enormous proportions but usually the size they- of a skyscraper uh, Godzilla size? Theoretically, they could. The ones that the largest we've seen haven't gotten that big, but theoretically, there is no limit. The problem is, though, lifespan is pretty short because the bigger you get, the more fights you attract. Yeah. And right. so, if you think about it, think it's about like it like you're a, walking. Think jump. about it like a single elimination tournament with the entire world. <laughs> like everybody you beat, you get to move to the next level, and half the population is now gone. But now you're up against everybody who beat somebody. Well, no problem. Now you do it again and again and again and so again. So it's a again. massive game each, of last man standing. Right. The le- and oh, each, each the level time. higher, you're oh, like, I am better. Time. And it's like, yeah, you're better than all the people have lost, but you're the same. You're not better than all these people until you prove it. And each level becomes harder and harder. So you, you have less and less survivability. But the biggest of the society, that's going to be their bosses, right? And they're going to, if they get big enough, they gather more and more orcs who come to try to beat them. And they, but they also like some of them stay subservient because they just fight amongst themselves because they're not ready to take on the boss yet. And that's all it really is. <laughs> so, so ridiculous. Right. And so <laughs> if they get it big enough, then he'll reroute them from stop fighting each other. So, okay, we got a bigger enemy that we can finally go and take. And they'll get happy and they'll go and fight. And if they win that fight, then it attracts more orcs because the orcs are like, I don't want to fight each other if we can fight something bigger. And so they keep going and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But what inevitably usually happens is that it gets so big that they can no longer find enemies that are interesting enough. And so they start fighting each other and they fracture and get smaller and the cycle continues. That's the fail safe I was talking about. But if you keep fighting them and keep giving them that challenge, eventually they will outgrow you and they will beat you. So you either have to decisively destroy them. That was my question. You have to decisively destroy them. You don't play a war of attrition with them. That's the, that's, or unless it's like one of those ones where you're like staying away and only taking out a few of them at a time and they hate that because they want to just get a good fight. But like, don't think that you can just keep grinding forces with them. Don't keep sending all your Astro Militarum against them and thinking that's going to win. You need Space Marines. You need Exterminatus. You need like you need utter don't, burn, kill, maim, burn. Don't give them a chance to continue to grow larger. Because even though right now they're laughably easy, the harder you hit them, the harder they then want to hit back. So they're like Doomsday in Superman. They come back a little stronger. Uh, if that's how, I'm not sure exactly not of his lore. No. So, yeah. okay, uh, neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> like the only thing I know about Doom. And exactly, exactly the same way. Then it's kind of like it's it's funny. It's almost like a cartoon when you try and picture. Like there's like the big boss who has all the orcs he's organizing. They don't want to challenge him because they know they're gonna lose. But they'll punch the nearest orc 
down on the ground, get a little bit bigger, look up at the boss. It's like one day. Yeah. And then they go find another work to punch. Kind of. And the yeah, boss and, you know, knows. He looks at all of them and he's just like, that's why he keeps knocking their heads together. Yeah. Because he, he has to keep proving he's the big boss. And so the ones that last the longest are the ones you should be most terrified of because if they've managed to hold together the, the orcs that long, then then you're giving them too good of a challenge, which means you're in trouble. <laughs> it reminds me, thinking about it now, it reminds me of like um, the first Space Marine game. There was like a mega boss you end up fighting a, like a lot. In that yeah, game. and he's huge. He's, yeah. He gets like bigger every time. He's huge. He's like a little bit bigger. He's a time. tank. He's the size of a tank. And he he's he's so funny because you beat him so much. Like, oh, I got you now, Space Marine. Yeah. <laughs> and he he loves it. He loves it. And you're just like, you, you, when you do beat him up, then he, and then he fights you later on, and he's just happy to find you. He's, he's like, so oh, excited to find yeah, you. Yeah, he's like, oh, first round two. Because <laughs> you beat him before, like spoiler alert, like because because you won the first fight. He's actually, spoiled. and he's so happy to see you again. He's like, ah, finally a challenge. I actually, because it's not like the big boss is worried about the people below him. He's just waiting for the next challenger because he wants to get bigger. I don't know how much I remember this by, but he ends up actually becoming spoiler. He actually become ends up becoming your ally towards the end because you're it turns out you end up fighting chaos towards the end of the game, and then you're in a. He doesn't quite. You, yeah. you still have to fight him. You, and you literally fight. use one of these to finish him off. But you're fighting like you have the model for that chaos lord over there. You end up fighting that chaos lord. And he gets like the upper hand a little bit, and who comes crashing through the roof? Yeah, he's like, he's mine. Yeah. <laughs> but then the chaos lord that's beating you up, yeah, like takes a strike at him, and he's just like bigger, and he just turns his attention to the bigger guy, and they go tossing off the side, it's, and yeah. he just. He's like filled with glee. He's just yeah. like, "Yay, best day ever!" Best as he day falls, ever as they fall down this end of the shaft, as he's fighting them to the death. <laughs> but so they're comic. They're they're so comic. But when you when you when you like really read stories about them, they're still comic, and yet they're so interesting. They're so neat how they have developed their lore and made them something more than just comic. So what was that? What was that war boss's name from that video? I can't game? remember. Do you remember? I, I don't remember. The way you asked it, I thought you remembered. No, no, like a I trivia said, question. I was asking Bottom. because it's like, you. I mean, I don't know if you realize, but you were like inadvertently telling me the story of this war boss. Yeah. Right? And so uh, my, my question is, is there the orc? Who is the most feared orc? Right now? <clears throat> Be Gaz. Yeah, okay. Oh, Gazgul Thraka right now. Yeah. Grimskull. Gazgul. Oh, there's a, a big bo a mega Grimskull. boss Grimskull. War boss Grimskull. War boss Grimskull. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He was in mega armor. Kind of yeah, remote. just yeah. but he he's nowhere near as big as Thraka. Like that's he's yeah, not like, nearly as big a deal the, as Thraka. The model for Thraka doesn't represent how big he actually is. Yeah, he's yeah. he's a big dude. So is Gazgul Thraka? Is yeah. he bigger than a space marine? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. He's bigger than like a land raider essentially. He. He's he, bigger than a, which is what well, a tank. Man, that could be that could be wrong. Guys. He's real big though. He's like a dreadnought. Well, he's bigger than that war boss was for sure. Yeah, dreadnought at least. Oh, easily bigger. At than least that. a dreadnought. Yeah. Well, even that's if you, cool. Even if you put the well, technically the he keeps growing, right? Like he never stops. The he's model, still alive. If you take the model now and put him beside even like a redemptor dreadnought, he's about as big, if not bigger, than a redemptor. And that's with like models never being quite the scale, because like a land raider, for example, is not the size of a land raider. It's more the size of a rhino. You want an accurate scale. A rhino yeah. should be the size of a land raider. To represent the models. And a land raider should be the size of a bane blade, and the bane blade should be way bigger. But that would be pretty annoying on the table at, might, at that yeah, scale. Just, there might be yeah. some stats for his like size online. I'm not. He's oh, big. I doubt it. Yeah, there's there's no way they're gonna big. they're gonna be like he's eight foot three. It's like no, oh, they're yeah. they're gonna stay away from that so that they can kind of. Well, it's ever changing anyway. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It doesn't matter. It's, it's like a no. It's like a live Gazgul tracker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a website thing. It's just somebody there. There should be a website for that. Like how big? It should be how big is Gazgul Thraka dot com? Yeah. Track his size throughout the ages. And there's like a from his like chronological uh weight and size it's like at this yeah. time he was this yeah. big and then he lost the battle got a little smaller yeah <laughs> no i don't think oh, so no, don't think they, they just die oh. yeah. and if you lose too many battles then oh, the orcs definitely turn on you so okay so that by itself is interesting orc physiology is there anything else special about so, them oh, yeah. i was gonna say you can get yes. into the weirdness yes. because they're just a bunch of fun guys yeah they're uh, fun guys they're, they're mushroom people they're like they're technically I, as far as i know they're a fungus i've heard i, I don't know I've i don't know I've heard they're I, a fungus what does that mean i, I think in like yeah. in the close physiologically phys they yeah. have more to do with uh with a uh, fungus than they do with like our humanoid yeah there's so no are they plants there's, there's no male and female orcs um they reproduce. but they're boys they're orc boys yeah that's what they're called because they came it's out in the boys. 80s and yeah. it's you know 
that's just the way things were kind of pushed. But it's really, crazy. it's it's that's, that's that's Imperium propaganda just to make you not feel bad about killing them. They call themselves that, uh, and they call yeah. themselves that too. But they're <laughs> but they're not. Maybe, they're, maybe they get it from the Imperium, though. Maybe oh, yeah, I think <laughs> it's probably because the first, maybe the first thing they thought was the Space Marines. Like, oh, they're all boys, so that's what we're gonna call ourselves. I don't know. It doesn't matter because that's that's the nonsense part, right? But they don't produce. They don't reproduce um, like we do. They reproduce asexually. So if you kill an orc, or actually if you don't even kill the orc, little bits of them fall off, and those grow into new orcs. Like they, what do you mean? They, like spores. They, they, they flake spores. They, spores. Tiny little microscopic spores. So even the if microscopic, you microscopic, mani- like like dead skin skin cells in the air. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and those grow into new orcs. And then when they die, they decompose and they make more. Orcs. And they actually grow into more orcs even more. Yeah, that's so do they kill, recycle their, their. Yeah, if you kill orcs off your planet, be prepared to be facing orcs forever. Yeah. Even if they never rise up to any level, you're always. Uh, this is going to be one There's of those. It's an invasive be, species that'll never go what's away. Yeah. Uh, what's the the reasoning behind uh, not like some sort of weed killer that just like. Shh. You'd have to find every last one of them. Yeah, because yeah. it's it, again it's these oh, tiny little suppose, spores. Yeah. So that's yeah. the thing is even if have, you, have we gotten rid of mold yeah, yet? You're it's right, like you're no, right, you're right? right? You can if you can find the pockets of it, you can get rid of it. But I think that's the neat thing because even if you defeat the orcs, the idea is and we talked about their society kind of providing what you need depending on who's around. So if there's a orcish invasion somewhere and you need to defeat it, cool. And there's no more orcs on the planet. But within a couple of years, there's going to be there's going to start to be some basic life forms that pop up. The things that you squigs need, the, the squigs will start to pop up, which are squiggly beasts, which we can get into. But the, that they ride it, it's a, sometimes. Well, so but that's also orcs their ride major squigs? food source. They're all the same. They're all made from the same kind of deal. Like, yeah, I think there's like different forms of. Do they start as squigs? Not always. No, I think the squigs are some of the first things that start to pop up. But then these basic orcs would start to pop up, and it wouldn't necessarily be the greatest of warriors. So. Um, if you have like a orc war boss and his spores aren't going to grow into other war bosses, um, the idea is that the spores would grow into like basic orc boys. And then once they have their little civilization start to be established, the next spores that grow will be the more complicated stuff till it gets to the point that, okay, they, they're starting to do more with, uh, vehicles and, you know, they're, they're at the point where they could start to build vehicles. Well, that's when the next spore that grows will be a mech yeah, that knows how to do vehicle stuff. Yeah. So as the, as that little orc settlement has needs to grow bigger, the spores will naturally grow into whatever the orcs need. So does knowledge pass through DNA with an orc? I don't, uh, I, I, it doesn't need I, to. It doesn't need to. Why doesn't it need to? Because they don't have to learn. They never have to learn. They already yeah, have pure every instinct. last... Well, no, there's more than that. Locked away in their DNA is every last thing that they'll ever need to know. Yeah. It, what, just, what you, just, like, you... just like your uh, sperm and an egg from a man and a woman has every DNA to create your fingernails, to your hair, to your heart, to your skin, to everything else like that. Imagine if your DNA could grow you into a mechanic... Or an engineer, or a psyker, or a librarian. I don't know what that. I'm just random yeah. stuff. Or, or a road a worker, gamer. or a or, warrior, or, or a war gamer, or a war gamer. War gamer. Like yeah. imagine if none of that was something that you learned, but was just pre-built in. Like every last bit of information ever needed to do any task whatsoever was stored in an incredibly complex genetic structure inside of you. So do and I? That when you, duality is an orc. Sure. Yeah, kind of. I, I don't know what yeah. that even means because they each individually grow to the thing that is necessary. Yeah. If I was an orc, would I say, "I we's gonna kill"? Okay, so it would oh, be- you might say we's if you have bad vocabulary, but <laughs> do I have good vocabulary? Some orcs do. Some of them are. I uh, yes, you could, but not usually. If it was in my DNA, though. No, no, if it's all in your DNA. It's, every orc is capable of everything. Every it can yeah. be anything. Yeah, but I don't think they grow to be a th- like if you if you end up as a basic orc boy no no you don't eventually become a mech uh it's not a, necessarily it's... no 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 it depends at what point in your lifestyle so when you first when they're first born they are called youths youths like youth but youths like in gorka morka that's yeah, where we get a lot of this from that's yeah it's, it's one of the places gorka morka is yeah completely so they're, they're spores, spores let me tell you there's their spores interconnect they create wombs that creates an orc <laughs> Um, and they start as youths, uh, like Gazgul Thraka started as a youth, and, and then you rise up and you become a boy by um, completing certain tasks, orc related. That's and cool. It's like your rite of passage. To exactly. Become, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Usually, obviously, by bashing together the heads of other youths, or maybe killing some big monster you find, or I don't know, whatever sounds youthish, youthish or boyish enough. That's boyish enough. 
<laughs> it should be orc mans, right? Not orc boys. But um, <laughs> Sounds but weird. no, at some point they would diverge, and according to the current wa energy that is going on, that collective wa psychic energy that'll push their DNA to form into certain things that are needed. So things could exist in the wild energy that we don't even know exists yet. A hundred thousand percent. And we have evidence of this once again, because of the largest wa that ever happened, which was after the Horus heresy, but long before, I think it's in the 32,000s yeah. was the beast arises. Yeah. So like 2000 years after the Horus heresy, we had an orc wa that was so large that they got to earth. Watch our segment on the Horus heresy. If you want context on that. Yeah. And so, yeah, this, this WA was so large that they developed technology beyond anything that humans could comprehend. <laughs> they could teleport entire moons filled with ships and stuff to wherever they wanted in the universe without going through the warp. Wow. And so they would just appear and they would just appear outside of your planet. And then it would just that the planet, the moon itself would open its maw and an entire fleet of ships would come out and they would invade. And when they got to Earth... So there's, there's this whole series, this spoiler alert here, because was, this came out a long time ago, so I don't feel bad saying this. When they get to Earth, the moon appears, the attack moon appears, and normally that immediately just dis, like, disgorges its attack. But this one didn't. It just hung in the air. Earth goes into panic, and we're talking Terra here, like the seat of the high, like the, the, high, lords. the high lords of Terra. And they're all infighting and crap in their pants, like, what do we do? How do we stop this thing? It just jumped past all of our defenses, what fell. Oh, my logo, whatever. Um, and, and, and they just jumped past all our defenses and got here, and then they just waited. <laughs> and eventually, a single orc ship comes flying down and lands right outside the palace. And out of that ship walk two orc ambassadors. Their wa got so big. Their wa got so big that they developed ambassadors, never before seen, but in, was in their DNA. And these ambassadors walked in to the High Lords of Terra's council chambers, walked in, and basically were like, do you want to surrender? And then they eloquently talked to them about why they should surrender. And these high lords were all like fighting amongst themselves that the orcs looked at each other and basically went, these guys suck and they're not worthy of our attention and walked away and launched their invasion. So they walked in prepared to have peace talks or at the very least surrendering and occupational talks with them because their society had grown so much and so large that I'm guessing that that was a fail safe for the orcs, that they would stop fighting and that they would start trying to talk peace so they wouldn't wipe out every last thing in the earth, <laughs> on, in the galaxy. I'm not sure that's my theory. And when they walked in and saw that they weren't ready for peace, that's when they, they actually looked at each other and said, I don't remember the exact words, but it's approximately something like, what uncultured swine. They are beneath our, uh, like they, they don't even deserve to be talked to. They are a lower life form and it is our duty now to wipe them out. <laughs> And that's what they face. So we saw things unlock that we had never seen before. So that's what I mean. Like it's like it's almost like they unlock more in their genome the bigger the wa energy gets. And so that the old ones or whoever created them or whoever didn't create them has all of these things stored away that allows them to grow as big as they need to and then fracture and kill themselves so they never grow too big. I think that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Yeah, so it's actually unknown how big they actually are. They're like defenders of the galaxy in a roundabout way. More like, a, a, I like to call them a failsafe. They're not <laughs> defending the galaxy. They're stopping. Because if humans get too big, yeah. chaos then reigns supreme. If uh, Tyranids try to eat it, well, then the, ga the galaxy's gone. So the, I, I think that there will be the ultimate defender against the Tyranids if we actually played out the lore. But I wonder if the Olinar campaign in the heresy was like a, a wah to rise up against the humans during their great crusade. Probably. Yeah. Or, yeah, and it's obviously they're just good stories. Another about... reference to the Horus Heresy, yeah. which, again, is in another segment. Oh, that's probably, yeah, humanity at the height of its power-ish. Yeah, so I, that's why I think orcs are cool. Now, there's lots of other reasons orcs are cool, like model-wise and and why people love to play them on the table. But I remember reading, it's always books that make a faction come alive to me. Uh, I, I, even something as simple as the Astra Militarum became super, which I never thought of were interesting, it became really interesting by reading books about them. So reading about that, reading about their culture, and how they think and how they work. Yeah, they're still simplistic animals. Even when they got to the ambassador level, they're still just like, let's just conquer everything. But it's just, it's just neat to, to see what you, a, a talented writer or group of writers can do with even the most comic beginnings to a race to be like, yeah, let's, let's, let's pretend there was a purpose to their, 
this nut job of a race. Let's pretend <laughs> that they're not just a comic relief, but that what would, what would it look like if they were actually serious? Why would they be like this? And then somebody must have, along the lines, figured this out. That's like, well, what if they're created to be that way so that they could just be a nuisance so that they could stop anybody from getting too big? So I think that's pretty cool. The Great Equalizer. The Great Equalizer. There we are. <laughs> Oracleizer. That's pretty cool. Don't go anywhere, folks. We are doing a sponsor segment here, which is self-sponsored. This is Jack. He's from Barnyard Wargaming. And we got Scary here too. What's it? Oh, Scary's here. He's in the house. And we got it. We're just looking all over here. And we're, we're showing off the Ravage Star minis. We're super excited about it. And we've got the scars over the faces. And, oh, that was so chaotic. Uh, yeah, it's so chaotic in nature. And it's, it's very fitting. It's very fitting. It's yeah, there's a link in the description for the GameFound campaign page. So you can check out all of the models and see what's at. We're, we're making all the rules, man. We're, we're writing the rules. We're developing the rules. It's all there. It's all for fun. We get to play it, Jack. Why would you it. not get it? Just go and get it. There's, there's the question. There, why? Wh why wouldn't you? Yeah. Have uh, you just go and do it? Yeah, we, we should probably just just do it. Yeah, just go go and go and do it and see what's there and see what's at and uh, yeah. Uh, I, I I would say back to the maelstrom, but this is a lot of fun. I want to stay here with you guys. Let's go back to the maelstrom. We did come from. Noob Hammer Orcs, which, you know, we're talking about them in a general brand new sense. But I think it'd be cool if we actually jumped into some fan stuff as well, where we think the direction of the Orcs are going in the lore. And also just more lore about Orcs in general. Because off camera, not 30 seconds ago, Matt was talking about this cool story of Vulcan, who's one of the Primarchs of Space Marines, fighting the Orcs. And encountering orcs that were so massive that they look like effigies. Yeah. He thought they were just statues until it stood up. <laughs> and, yeah, and, right. we, and how big are <laughs> Can these? Can you imagine? How big are these statues are we talking? Like, uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, but at least a couple stories tall. Okay. Just massive. Like we're talking like, like Gaskell Throck. Godzilla it looks size. like a baby next to them. Yeah. Like 20, 25 feet tall. There was a room yeah. full of Gaskell Throckas in there with them when he approached. Yeah. They fought through... They, we're talking about an extended war, planet by planet by planet by planet. They fought back the orcs to their home world. They invaded it. They barely made it through it. They fought the biggest armies, these biggest, baddest orcs. They make it to the chamber, and they walk in, and they see what they thought were four statues of orcs sitting on thrones, and surrounding them in the upper like balconies were orcs bigger than the ones that they'd already been fighting this entire time. And that's when they realized that they hadn't even encountered the worst of the orcs yet that they had reserved these because they hadn't been worthy of to them for a fight yet. And that's when then one of those statues stood up and they realized it wasn't a statue, that it was the leader of the orcs. And so, and then they fought it. It was great. I'm not going to tell you how it ends because you need to go read it. Were they, were they confused? Like were the humans confused? They were totally, they walked in and they're just like, all these orcs are up there looking down on them all chanting. And they're just like, what the frick is going on? Cause we fought tooth and nail to get to this point thought we fought your best forces and beat them or at least they was a spearhead so they weren't going to win they weren't like destroying all the orcs <laughs> they were just punk they were just getting through to get to the spot because you kill the leader of the orcs that usually ends the war or at least slows it down and so that's what they were trying to do and they get in that room and they're like dang every single one of these orcs is bigger than any orc we've fought so far yeah. and there's lots of them and then the guy that stands up is bigger than all of them like Gasco Thraka could have been in the throng and they wouldn't have known noticed him right there. So like there's so many of them. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Wow. Yeah, that's you want to see what happens, read the Beast Arises series. It's they're mostly they're mostly good. The Beast O rises? The, um, beast arises. the Beast Arises. Oh, the Beast Arises. Like yeah, yeah. the Beast Rises up. Cool. They're good. They're good. Awesome. So Orcs. Oh, that Just, was, that was gonna say another cool part to tie into that. It's like they're they've like they have like this like holy home world or like they're it's always the same planet right it's always the same one well, it has been yeah, yeah. it has been they, they, but yeah you're right no it has always been the same one they that always they were they're like spiritually attracted to this one planet i actually have no idea why it's uh in the horus area it's called olinor i don't know what it's called in the beast arises it's still olinor okay. until the end but uh, the spoilers it becomes something else. Oh, well, okay, that's fair. It becomes another well-known orc planet in modern war. Okay, war hold on one second, one second. Lore. Okay. And beast, orcs are always attracted to it. They beast arises. Do. It's spoiler alert. If you don't want to know anything about this book, stop listening for X amount of minutes. And then we then will can, signal with really wavy openly. hand gestures when we're done talking about it. Okay, to tell, finish what you're talking about. Okay, so simply put, Olinor is the home world that the orcs launched their war from. 
nothing special about it besides it being armed to the like when they show up and orbit around it they look down and they literally watch a continent open up and shoot weapons up at them like that's how big the constructs are on that planet um eventually spoiler alert eventually they win and the admech sneaky little gets josh i love how you're looking directly at josh you're like yeah the admech the admech are supposed to use the t- same teleportation technology that the orcs have been using to teleport the entire world into the nearby star to thus just destroy it down to every atom so that there's no spores left and also this this holy world is gone because it was just ridiculous it's the second second uh, occurrence where they've had to deal with orcs on olinor right both very big struggles but the admech totally being an ally to humanity instead trick them and teleport the world simultaneously to teleport another world to take its place and then teleport that one into a star and they teleport that one to an orbit to around another indiscreet system where they then strip it down and learn its technology later on that world is now known as armageddon which is a very Ooh. popular planet in warhammer 40k lore known for the invasion of gazkul thraka they keep attacking they keep, they keep getting attacked by orcs armageddon and they don't know why many wars all orc related yeah. yeah. Uh, no, not all. Well, yeah, I say two and three were orc related. I yeah, think. it's true. Yeah, correct. And so the Beast of Rises gives that, I don't know if you call it a retcon or whatever you want to, but it gives a, a reason as to why the orcs are so interested in it. I'm not too sure why. It's just there's like, there's some attraction in the Armageddon. Maybe, because they're like after. The maybe Ad- the planet core is just one large orc. That'd be interesting. <laughs> there you go. There's some lore hammer. The planet itself is an orc. That's how big they can, there's your answer. That's how big they can get. I wonder what the orcs call it. So I, th- I assume it like the, the name is just an imperial name for it. You know what else is interesting? You're kind of, because we've done this on, on the heels of multiple days of talking about lore, but one of which was Tyranids and that they kind of function similarly, it sounds. It sounds like the orcs are an organism and each is a cell in a massive body of orc, just as Tyranids would be cells in one Tyranid. It's a very similar sounding thing that's happening there. It does, like orcs have like a free will. I know they, they go off and do their own thing, but that could just be like some illusion, I suppose. Well, like, like an illusion of free will. I don't know. I don't really know. I don't know. Are, we can get philosophical. Yeah, get philosophical are we all are it, we yeah. all pre programmed to yeah. a certain destiny that we have to follow? I love chocolate. Um, right? Like, <laughs> is, is it just the DNA that we're given to from our parents, and then the circumstances <laughs> around us that form us that we don't really have choices? <laughs> If if you have a Case billion, point, really. if you have a hundred million astro military marching toward, do you really look at them as individuals, or do you look at them as like regiments and groups, all part of one large war machine? Like you can always kind of zoom out True. and look at that. Yeah, I think the orcs, in the purest sense, are still individuals that they're not linked as a hive mind, but they are connected through a psychic power. That lets them. similar to Tyranids. Well, it it not necessarily the Tyranids is an outward link. Kind of picture it like a something going out and connecting to all of them, whereas the the orcs, it's like a symbiotic link. It's like an inward link. Yeah, it's more like a shared link. Yeah, that it's like they don't the they don't realize the it. It's... They don't realize it, but every like that Gaskell Thraka needs all of the other orcs around him to feed him the energy, the green energy to keep him sustained as well, and his ability to do what he's doing. Sorry, the green energy, the wa energy. Yeah. yeah. So like mechanically in the game, when they're doing their psychic powers and everything, both iterations of the game their powers are more powerful based on how many homies are nearby how many uh, other orcs are nearby and everything yeah sometimes nice. a little overwhelming though sometimes it's like too much <laughs> yeah if you get too many then they blow up easier yeah yeah okay well that that's th- so it actually sounds like the more dangerous there are the you more know what? is there any like big weird boy war bosses not really not in the game but narratively i wonder huh like, Age, of, like, like, Age of sigmar definitely i don't know about 40k isn't there isn't there one currently like isn't there one named weird boy model for the orc range? Is there a named weird boy? I thought there was a named weird boy. Oh, there's for the the beast hunting ones. I thought there was. He's got like a weird metal claw arm or something. He's not oh, really that, that no, big, that's though. Mad Doc Rotsnick. Oh, he's a doctor. He's a weird. He's that's a, a pain boy. Pain, pain boy. boy. Yeah. Pain boys are doctors. Yeah, those are do- obviously weird boy. Pain boy. Pain boy. Obviously, yeah. obviously, obviously, doctor. Yeah. Mech, mech boys or mech mechs. Boy, those yeah. are your mechanics. Those sound like mechanics, but pain weird boys. Weird boys. They're weird. Yeah, I guess pain boys would be doctors, but it doesn't sound like it. It's they sound- look malicious too. They're not really like. 
<laughs> the, the one model has got like a big grin on his face. He's got like nasty little like mechanical like medical claw arm things. Like I don't want anything to do with you, dude. Like <laughs> no, thank you. Like a deranged surgeon. Yeah, one hundred percent. They're all a little suspect. Yeah, well, they're all important though because the the pain boys that they'll put you back together so you can fight. Yeah, keep fighting. It's mm-hmm. good. Sure, maybe it's not your leg that love, you found is stuck back on you, but does it matter? <laughs> yeah, they can upgrade you a little bit too. So they can yeah, they can yeah. Frankenstein you? Oh, 100%. oh orcs are always yeah. they're like anything to keep fighting. They'll have augmented limbs and organs and whatever, or lives. borrowed limbs and organs. Borrowed, yeah. Because yeah. you, you can graft a, a different no, orcs arm on. Yeah, there. sure, absolutely. No, so they're like plants because you yeah, can graft 100%, yeah, yeah, limbs, in that regard, and branches. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Can you connect orcs together? Oh, now we're getting to weird oh, monstrosities. Well, that doesn't sound right, but probably. probably like, you know. I don't think we've ever seen that happen. So I don't think that's the point that Games Workshop wants them to be. So you probably won't see them as horror. Yeah, that'd be like a weird Although now that you said that, orc now that you said that, I want to see it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's been done somewhere. Like a two headed orc. Officially, yeah, we'll get or something. Kind of you grabbed a head yeah, like a into orc. another yeah, orc? Yeah, yeah. What would happen if you grafted a head into another orc? I don't would know. Would there be a two headed orc or two orcs in one body? That uh, sounds like like a choke. There would never or something. be a need for that, right? So if an orc is I'm the smartest. Body to, I am. to say never in need <laughs> is to <laughs> negate the fact there's billions of worlds, <laughs> apparently e- each of which is able to have mossy orcs on them. And so it's like, I'm sure it's been done somewhere. Do you think orcs are wet? It would vary. <laughs> like moist and damp? Or yeah. <laughs> like do like their flesh? Is it like clammy? Do they have clammy flesh or is it probably I, I, where they are? Do or do orcs sweat? I don't, I don't think so. Do orcs sweat, Steve? Do orcs sweat? <laughs> you can't well, look it up. Yeah, you can't think about that now, aren't you? <laughs> like, I, now you said mossy orcs. I'm like, now I, I think of moss. Now I, I think of like weird, like, just they're kind of like damp all the time. Kind of like, yeah. I mean, like, you're, what you're describing <laughs> is moss. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, but I mean, like, does that mean are they dry? Yeah. They're spores, right? Oh, they're they're just, yeah, they're do they bleed? Orcs bleed, right? Orcs bleed, yeah. Yeah, okay. So. Like green blood? I don't know. I think they've been back and forth on that because it's weird to paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, green on green. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure orcs bleed. Ooze green, like the predator. Oh, they have muscles, so I guess they have like other things that would make. I don't know. I'm trying to guess what orcs. I don't. I don't know if we've ever had a detailed yeah. anatomy of an orc ever posted. Only space marines get that honor. Yeah. No, there uh, was there was a book way back when that had a bunch of the Xenos races. Was it like a laid out? Like yeah. Just showing do you, you remember what it was called? Or, I don't remember what it's called, but orcs do bleed. It's green. It is uh, the primary way of spreading their fungus. We, we were talking about that earlier. I was going to correct it. It's not coming off their skin. It's actually their blood that spores. Also, they kind of have to die. Do they ever like like cultivate? The, do they know how to cultivate their spores? No. Or is it aware. just through fighting and dying? They, they need just do it to in get it. chopped up a bit to spread that fungus. Are they? Pretty sure orcs cannibalize, or is that the squigs they eat? No, they eat, they'll eat anything. Yeah, they'll eat anything. Yeah, yeah. So if I were an orc, Meat. I could just be like, and then like walk on a line in like <laughs> agriculture oh, oh. myself. Like, is that something? <laughs> but those spores wouldn't necessarily form something unless the wa energy says they need to form something. Yeah. I don't so think if I was the last orc, I would die. So okay, so if you were the last orc and you died, like all other fungi, like all the other fungal growths are gone. Like there's no other possible orc spawning anywhere. Yeah, I'm just somehow the last orc. Somehow the entire universe was cleansed of every last orc and orc fungus, mm-hmm. which is impossible. But let's just say it happened. Because mm-hmm. even the, I don't even think the Tyranids could have accomplished that. Um, would the last orc die? Well, maybe. Then he would spread his fungus, and it would start yeah, over. When you again. die, you start to decompose. And there goes but you spores. just said maybe it would not because there wouldn't be enough water energy. Well, okay. The fact that there's no wa energy present there mean that the basic things would start to pop That's up. That's kind of what makes them. So what it, it would be a feral to... orc. It wouldn't have any. It'd have a hardly, barely any level of intelligence. Yeah, you had no one else to like bounce his wa energy off. Of but him. if yeah. you were an orc living in an orc society, you couldn't just go, you know, stab yourself and grow yourself some new orcs. Uh, okay. That's not what the society needs right now. You could bash your teeth, but it's what it deserves. Like currency, though. Yeah, if you were, yeah, you could collect your, you know. Oh, the you orcs. could collect teeth and use them as currency. Orcs are like a pretty, yeah, that's like, a thing too, isn't it? I'm pretty sure they have like a, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they collect teeth. Yeah, it's a big thing. They love teeth. Uh, Why but, teeth? Uh, it's a small thing they can carry easily. No, it's, it's yes, and it's yeah. also because the bigger, you are, the, bigger, work, yeah. the, the bigger you are, the bigger the bigger your teeth. So it's and like a trophy, right? So if you knock somebody else's teeth out, 
it's worth more money. It's worth more money. And so, yeah, the, the more teeth you can grow and their, their teeth grow back fast like sharks. And so it's not a big deal if you get your teeth knocked out. It's like, oh, they'll grow back. I never considered that. So if they have to pay for something, they can. So they're their own bank. Yep. yep. Yeah. So yeah. could you like take your own tooth out and be like, hey, I got Yeah, it. you could. But you, then you would have less teeth in your mouth at the time. And that'd be kind of a shame. But they grow I feel back. Like that's cheating. Oh, but it depends on what you're buying. With yeah, the but teeth. They, they, do, their, they, do their teeth grow back if they knock out their own teeth or only yeah, somebody else sure. knocks out their own teeth? So no, if you no, see no. a bunch of orcs and they have no teeth, it's like, yeah, it's definitely after Christmas. Right. <laughs> yes. They got some debts to pay. Yeah. Yeah. Debts, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. orcs are also like really like. They're short lifespans. Well, because they fight and die a lot. Compared to humans? They're, they don't... No, don't, they, they don't have... They're immortal. They do not, they do not die naturally. They, they never die naturally. They have a short no. lifespan because they have so much fighting, but I don't believe they go through like an infancy stage. I think they pop out of the ground. They Okay, yeah. so the old lore is the fungus sprouts. It goes underground. It forms a cocoon and an orc grows. Comes out as pretty much like a teenager. Like the Yurik guy. Yeah, but pretty yeah. much like... A, they come out like a teenager. Already. So they came out of trees, fully grown orc men. Yes. But no, it's like they're more like orc teenagers like what like 16 year old uh, they're they're called youths yeah like yeah. guardians two Groot. Groot. uh sure you said teenager maybe, maybe a little maybe like, yeah, yeah. he's just he's just so little he'd be maybe like, a little bit more advanced maybe, than that. like they're physically strong when they like not as strong as like a older orc or like a bigger orc but like they're capable of doing things immediately yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Depending if there's more Y energy, maybe they're capable of doing more. Correct. Quite possibly. Yeah. Depending on what the society needs at the time. So it's yeah. always been kind of a funny idea, like, you know, being like, uh, say, Eldar from, uh, of any variety or like a space marine or something, and you're fighting orcs, uh, and you unfortunately go down and you lose the fight and you die, and you got beat up by some guy who was born like four hours ago, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if if yeah, you, you were... still happen to get the landing blow, yeah. Like, you've been training as an Astartes for 100 years, you're a captain, and you're just overwhelmed by orcs in the. Some a four hour old orc got the killing blow on you. Yeah. That's awesome. That'd be yeah. quite the upgrade for him. He'd That'd definitely be... become a boy at that point. Yeah. yeah. It happens. It happens all the time. It'd be probably, it'd be cool if like that four year old took out the teeth of the Astartes and it'd be like, look, I got me some teeth. Uh, they don't like other people's teeth. They're too small. It's really? Orc teeth are like the main crazy. They, yeah. They're always fighting each other. So they're always like clocking each other and taking each other's teeth. Yeah. Teeth. So like human teeth, they're like. No, no. they're too small. No. Look it's the, look like the currency. It's not backed in No, gold. it's. They'll take like anything big, like bigger than their own though value. Their, theirs themselves are quite big. So they're like horse teeth, essentially. <laughs> tusks. There's yeah. a lot of tusks. They got a lot of tusks. 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 Too, yeah. If they're big. Big teeth. Yeah. Which is, if memory serves correct, there's all the different orc clans, and I can't remember which one it is right now because I'm bad with the names. Bad but the, the 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 bad moons have the fastest growing teeth out of all the orcs, <laughs> so they're, so the, they're the richest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they have the best. That's that's their rule in the game. Like the best equipment. That's why the real ones. Like they have the best armor and guns and because they can afford it. Because they can afford it. They are the richest clan. So they're the most powerful. Uh no. Uh, no, they're not. the richest. They're the richest. That's different. Well, if they're the richest, then they have the best equipment they're and the best biggest. armor. Therefore, the most powerful. They don't, they don't evolve uh, that strong because they're no, the like goths are the strongest. Goths are the strongest. The goths. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you have the goths. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you might have better armor than me, but I'm just bigger than you. Yeah, so I'll, just, just, I'll, I'll just beat I'll, you up and I'm take just it from me. I'm gonna hit you harder and take your armor. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a big goth thing. They're big looter. Uh, are they the? Are they looters too? No, is that? Well, they're all looters. What's a looter? Ah, there we go. Luta. Luta. What's a looter? Luta. Well, they're they just like taking things. They just steal stuff. Or a yeah. bunch of robbers. Yeah. If they, they'll go to for a fight, either because it's a good fight or because there's good loot. Yeah. Either of those will draw them in. So if you had a planet filled with armaments and stuff, and there wasn't much of a fight to put up, they'll still happily go there because they want the stuff. I kind of want to play orcs in Total War now. It's yeah, pretty, right. Yeah. yeah. Right. They like the fantasy orcs were more of like a, I remember they were more focused on like eating things as like their loot, like food. They're always looking for food. Okay. But in the video game, they kind of adapted a looting mechanic to them too, where they just take stuff, and that's kind of funny. Yeah, and you can upgrade your orcs with like looted gear, and like you then they'll they'll look like they have like dwarf armaments and like human armaments and everything like that. It's kind of cool. So they like to scrap a lot of things together, like in a scrapyard. And they and they uh, but but then they augment it and make it better in their mind, and because they believe, well, as far as I understand, as long as they believe it'll work, it'll work. So that's the wall energy that's the that makes that happen. Energy, though, like yeah. a big amalgamation of it. Yeah. So it's kind of true then, because whatever, like you don't even know what to expect from the wall energy. Anything can happen. Anything can evolve from it. So I remember, yep. I remember one of my like, one of the stories that I thought was funny was there's like a, a, a typical battle between some space marines and some orcs. There's like a big wall, and then the uh, the marine has no weapons, and he, he you know he kills an orc, and he <laughs> he goes he goes to grab like the gun the orc was just shooting, and it's got no trigger. Has no has no munition. It just, but it was a, literally seconds ago firing munition at him. 
but it would have no way to logically work. Yeah, it's like a pipe welded together. Yeah, it's, yeah. Really like, it's like, like two pipes welded when together. When they've looked at that. But I think there's also, because uh, I'm trying to remember if it's the same story or another one that um, if the orcs believed that gun could kill them, you yeah. could you could pretend to shoot at them with it. Yeah. Yeah, you could pick it up and kill them with it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yes. it'll work as long yeah, as they think it's Because they believe it works. It works the other way around. You've got to run the... at them. Like, you got to Han Solo them in, like, Star Wars, where it's like, ah! And all the stormtroopers run away. Yeah, yeah. It's like as long as they think it's a threat, it'll work. So orcs are. There's all sorts awesome. of funny little things, like uh, you know, the it's a universal truth that the the red ones go faster. Yes, the color so if you thing. if you have your vehicle and you paint it red, that means that makes it faster. And because they believe it, it's true. Something like and, pur- it, and purple makes you stealthy. Purple sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> or is it blue? Pur- no, no purple. blue is lucky. Like, oh yeah, blue's lucky. <laughs> yeah. Purple, purple works. They know how to hide better than anybody else. Yeah, and it works. Yeah. yeah. Well, of course it works because we yeah. believe it works. Yeah. yeah, but they're purple right in front of you, and somehow you didn't see them. <laughs> you can't see them they're literally obfuscated by like their like I don't know need to hide. It's, but it's not a cloaking device. You just didn't notice them. You just didn't notice. Them. <laughs> they could be right in front of you. They got purple shoes on. It's like a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy when they land their spaceship in the middle of Earth. And he says, Aren't, is, are we going to notice this? And he's like, I'll just turn on my cloaking device. And he presses a button and nothing happens. And he's like, nothing happened. And he's like, well, actually, I turn it on. The cloaking device is, it's, it's somebody else's problem. And so everybody who looks at it, they see the spaceship and they go, oh, a spaceship. And then they immediately think, that's somebody else's problem. <laughs> and then they leave. And for that reason, nobody does anything about the spaceship in the middle of like modern day Earth. It's just, it's just it's in genius. the middle of it's and they're right in the open <laughs> in like a parking lot of a restaurant that they landed at. And he's just like, right, now nobody's going to say anything. Because they all just walk by. I would say, that's, I, what the, that's what happened to the purple orcs. If there's a purple orc right here, we'd all look at it and be like, all right, that's somebody else's problem. <laughs> <laughs> and we you, wouldn't notice it. You might think it's like a movie prop or it's there for some reason. It's like whatever. Or you know it's an orc and you're just like, ah, it's an orc. Uh, you know what? Somebody else has got that taken care of. I'm, it's Even a space marine would see it and be like, no, nah, it's my captain will have to tell me what to do. <laughs> and it walks away. So here's a question then for you guys. Because <laughs> the, the other day when you were describing the Sisters of Battle and their acts of faith and the god light of the emperor and like, oh, I, give me the strength and the, help me defeat my enemies. And so it's like, it happens. That miracle happens. It sounds very similar yeah. to it's orc. It's very similar. Yeah, it's like, okay. I think- so if I'm an orc, it's really no different. If I'm a sister of battle, Oh, I, I believe this would happen. Explosion. Boom. And so it's the same. It's on a much grander scale. Oh yeah. There's this, yeah. there's this so way bigger. Sister, yeah. It's a miracle. The orcs, it's uh, firing a pipe. It's everything they yes, do. so it's even more powerful than Your ships. Don't even have engines. They build things that look like that's engines. true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. like they just they they make it look like what it should look like, but it has no logical reason it would work or mechanical reason that it would work, but it does. Their is, ships don't shouldn't fly, but they fly. Yeah. Is it like because uh, going back to hitchhikers, isn't it like the improbability button or something like that? The probability drive, yeah, where you calculate the improbability or the probability of something happening, and then you can make it actually reality. Yeah, except that that's done purposefully. The orcs is more done intuitively. Oh, so it's built in, so it's even more powerful. I think. I think the the cool thing about 40k as a whole is that they've they it, like like I said, you, when you you start off you start off as nonsense, right? You're just like, oh, let's just have this fun thing. But then as you write more and more stories, and you have to make sense of it, and you got to take it seriously, authors are forced to come up with explanations as to why these things work, like the green energy of the wall. Oh, that's why it works. Not just because this is nonsense, which I, I'm not making fun of it. I'm just saying that that's what's the inevitability. You've got to explain it for good or for or better or for worse. But I do like that they've kind of found a way, whether on purpose or not, to link pretty much everything in the 40K galaxy as being all psychic driven. And so like this, the, the miracles of faith, you're right. That's just... It's pretty much the same thing. It might be at different scales, but it's the same thing. Like yeah. It's just what you believe is going to happen. Now, some of them pray to believe. Others, it's just like, it's a well done. It's as common it's sense. This gun works, obviously, because look, bam. It's it just math. It's just, well, yeah, exactly. Type on gun, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. In The Beast Arises, in the very first book, there, there's some Imperial Fist fighting orcs. And after the battle, the uh, Imperial Fist tech marine brings over a gun and he opens it up and it's just solid metal <laughs> it's just solid metal. but but he demonstrated something and he's like see this and the guy looks at it and he's like how does that work and he's like let me show you and there was a big pile of dead orc bodies nearby but they were they were just freshly killed and he brings it over to them 
and he puts one of their hands on it and he pulls their finger and it actually shoots, even though there's no mechanical thing, because there was still a residual green energy around them that the gun actually functioned. And it just blew the Imperial Knights, or Imperial, Imperial Fist, sorry, not Imperial Knights, Imperial Fist's mind. That he's just like, what? How does that work? And they're like, we have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is that when you get close to like this, this palpable psychic green energy that's coming off of the, even these dead bodies, this gun works. And so that's kind of their explanation. But it's kind of a neat, elegant way to wrap it into all the nonsense of chaos and the emperor and everything else, which yeah. doesn't it's make sense, but it, you just kind of the not the nonsensicalness is actually what makes sense because they're consistent with the nonsense, with the nonsense, which makes it actually believable. Right. Yeah. That's they're ironic. With the nonsense. Yeah. Well, yeah, if, you, if you really dig into it, right. Yeah. You're, like, you're like, Oh, this is dumb. It's like, well, no, it's not dumb. It's dumb on purpose because it's chaos. Yeah. It's all from chaos and chaos has any rule we need it to be, but you have to believe it. Ultimate. Yeah. MacGuffin. And that means that we as the readers and players are all contributing to that nonsense energy because we all buy into it. <laughs> and therefore the game is fun and yeah. therefore we like it, yeah. even though it's nonsense. That because we sit like here propaganda. explaining why it's not nonsense. Yeah. I want just to convince ourselves that it's not nonsense. The game the game's always the best, but it's not taking itself too seriously, right? Yes, there's yeah. that too. I was uh that's definitely uh, one side of it. It is very serious. It's very yeah. serious. Yeah. Very serious business. I was uh, it's a little bit of a spoiler, a little off topic. Well, it's Warhammer related, but I was watching my friend play the new Rogue Trader game yesterday. And no real spoilers. He was just doing a big, serious 40K combat. So, like, dealing with real big threats. And then afterwards, he goes back to um, to deal with the uh, Detus Minestorum. And uh, he's a Rogue Trader. It's a pretty, pretty big deal. Uh, he gets back there and is like, okay, uh, you are 3,384 in line. He's like, well, I'm a Rogue Trader. He's like, I don't care, dude. You think you think your you think your title can beat Imperial bureaucracy? No, no, it can't. So like it kind of took him out of the situation of like a serious combat over a serious issue, and then the oh yeah, forty k is ridiculous because like uh, nothing can beat the Imperial bu the bureaucracy of the Imperial. <laughs> the red tape. The red, the red tape. tape. Yeah. It's like oh, I can I can fight fifteen k. You see, you see Vulcan like ten bosses in front of like a primer. Yeah, Vulcan ten bosses. Just, it's just right. there go. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about, right? Like, like this is the, why he hasn't returned yet. <laughs> he's stuck at the BMV. Is he's that still what it is? In line waiting <laughs> for his license to return. And it's just like some <laughs> some old woman behind the desk, just like not. Lit. He's like. <laughs> ma'am please please she's just not listening she's yeah like, i need to return to my people <laughs> like, it's like care. what was your name again vulcan v-u-l-k <laughs> -E i'm sorry i don't have you on my registry here you need to go to a part of the department number seventy five thousand and ask them for the proper <laughs> written permission do you think being a primark makes you better than all yeah <laughs> he, and he, just like, and he just looks down and goes no ma'am <laughs> <laughs> walks away that's the kind of that's my level of for you. It's so ridiculous. Yeah, I mean that's that's for certain, right? Um, yeah, that, I think that's a really good lore hammer segment. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Maelstrom of Lore. If you enjoy this show, check it out in the vault. It shows your support for it, and it'll mean we'll make even more. And also leave your suggestions below as to what you think we should cover in the upcoming episodes. Thank you very much, and happy wargaming, folks. Thanks again for tuning in, folks. I'm Mini Wargamer Dave, and you're in the Maelstrom of Lore.